I want to jump into our sermon for the day. Again, we're in a sermon series on hope, health, and healing, and today we are focused on health. If you don't mind, go with me in your Bible, on your uh, device, on the screen. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning with verse 23. It reads as follows. Paul says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. From this text, I want to speak to you on the title, Health is an Inside Job. Health is an Inside Job. God, I pray this would be your message. Ultimately, you would be speaking, and I would just be the vessel, the vehicle you have decided to use to say what you want to say to these, your beloved children, my sisters and brothers. I want to be obedient to your word. So please let it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Health is is an inside job. Sisters and brothers, there, there's a difference in how the world in which we live uh, decides if you're healthy, how it judges health, and how health is looked at in the Bible. Uh, but it's important for us to, to be concerned to, to have a plan around our health. It, it is. It, you know what? I know we live in a world that wants us to believe that the greatest commodity we have, maybe it's our home, our retirement, the money that's in our bank account right now. But you know what? The greatest resource you have is you. The greatest resource I have is me. I, I mean, uh, that, that, that because you, 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 you can have a nice house, but, but if your health is not right, you, you know what I mean? You, you can have a great job. There, there are all kinds of people that have looked great on the outside because that's what the world does. The world decides if you're healthy by looking at the outside for the most part. Like what outside things do you have that's material that I can see? What kind of car you have? What kind of uh, house do you have? You know, you know what, 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 what's going on with you? What kind, of, what, what kind of purse is that? What kind of shoes are those? What kind of sweater is that? What kind of jeans? You know, are those J's? Are those J's? What's that? You know, so we look at the outside and we just assume based on the outside somebody's okay. We just look at physical appearance. And, and we decide based on physical appearance, we decide if somebody's healthy. We look at the outside. We also look at what's coming out of a person into the atmosphere to decide if they're healthy. You know, you're, oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? What's, what's, the, oh, what did you have for lunch? Okay, okay. Oh, you know what I mean? Like we, so we look at the outside, and then what comes out of us into the atmosphere, we decide if somebody's healthy. When you go to the doctor, what do they say? They want to look at the outside, get on the scale. Then they want to look at your ears, and they want to put it on your tongue, and they want to look at your eyes. All, all that is fine. I'm not putting that down. I'm just saying that the world tends to look uh, uh, from the outside, and yet the Bible starts on the inside. It, it, it's not that God doesn't care about your outside at all. It's just that's not where God starts. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, um, the, the prophet Samuel is at the house of a guy named Jesse. And, and Samuel's been sent there by the Lord to, to choose who the next king of Israel will be. And so uh, Jesse is bringing these sons that are like strong and handsome. And on the outside, they just look like that's what a king looks like. That's what a king looks like. And God keeps saying to Samuel, no, that's not the one. No, that's not the one. Verse uh, 7 of 1 Samuel 16, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, don't, don't take that text to mean God doesn't look at the outside at all or God doesn't care at all. It's just the world starts with the outside appearance. God starts in the inside with what is in a man or woman's heart. Um, a year or so ago, I, I decided that I needed to get in better physical shape. 
And so I started working out uh, with a guy that, that's in our church, Kyle Lawson. And, and so I thought I was just going there like it's kickboxing, it's circuit training and all that stuff. But because Kyle loves the Lord and because his commitment to health is bigger than just the physical, we spend a lot of time talking about the spirit, talking about inside stuff. And so um, here's a little video that I want you uh, uh, to watch of me and Kyle having a conversation about health from the inside out. Check this out. You know, in my commitment to being healthy, you know, I, I've been wanting God to lead me deeper into how I can be healthy physically, emotionally, mentally, of course, spiritually, right? And Kyle Lawson, who's a part of our church, has been such a, a big part of that for me. So I work out with you once a week. And so kickboxing, but we don't just work out for my physical health we have conversations about like spiritual health and emotional health and you've got an art piece right here that i want you to hold up and just talk about where where you are describing in this piece the whole person as spirit soul and body sure so oftentimes we talk about how our whole self our whole person is fully integrated so often uh, we see the spirit the soul and the body as separate pieces, but in reality, they all work as one. So basically, when we're saved, when we accept Jesus Christ into our lives, the Holy Spirit comes in and indwells our spirit. And what that represents here on this art piece is the yellow in the center. So that's the part where the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of us in this impenetrable place. He begins to go through us he starts to affect our minds. And then the last place that he affects is our body. Yeah, we get changed, we get saved from the inside out. That's why people can be saved and not necessarily have the right mindset and they might not have the right body, but the Lord will transform that through his spirit, connecting with your spirit, through your mind and through your body from the inside out. And that's what I appreciate so much working out with you because it's like, we don't just come in here and you go, okay, punch, kick, get on the bike, lift some weights. It's like, yeah. we we talk about God. We talk about what's going on on the inside of me and how that's gonna impact how I look on the outside. Uh, everything is so fully integrated. So once we change our minds, once we let the Holy Spirit capture our minds, then He comes in and changes our decision-making. He changes our personality. He changes our wants and desires and our will. And in turn, that changes how we treat our body. It changes how we um, conduct our daily lives in terms of habits and getting enough rest and putting the right nutrients in and exerting, exuding through fitness. All of those things are fed from the Holy Spirit by changing our mind. And then it comes out and exudes through our body. Amen, amen. And you know what? One of our members, Gus Armstead, who's on our board, when I was first working out with you, he was he was teasing me a little yeah. bit, but I'm getting good. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of getting, you don't Gus. with me. That room is nasty. You won't see it in church, but... Oh, yeah, because in church, you know, I'm, I'm non-violent. I'm I dare non you to. I dare you to cross him, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate you, and I'm glad Absolutely. that you, you are so committed to people being healthy from the inside out. Bless you, man. All right, okay. <laughs> so, it, it's not that God doesn't care about the outside, but our health with God starts on the inside. This is what Paul wanted the church to know in 1 Thessalonians. Paul is providing a holistic understanding of the self and of health. The whole self, Paul is describing as spirit, which is our intimate connection with God, the soul, which is our mind and our heart, our thinking, our emotions, and the body, the physical. Paul is also in this letter focusing on the health of the church because the health of the church is at risk when Paul is writing this letter. It's at risk for two reasons. One, there are false teachers 
that are coming into the church. One of the ways that a church can be unhealthy is when it begins to lean into some things that are either unbiblical or are manipulations of scripture. Because you can take a verse here and a verse there and make it mean whatever you want it to mean and you can use it to oppress people, to manipulate, to spiritually abuse people. And so false teaching can bring unhealth into a church. But the other thing that they were facing was persecution on the outside. Because at this moment, in, in, in the culture at the time, in the Roman Empire, they were being persecuted for being Christian. They were being thrown in jail. They were being uh, stoned to death, beaten, beheaded, crucified like Jesus. And so uh, they were walking around with their health at risk at all times externally. And because of false teaching, their health was at risk internally. And so Paul is focusing on health. So it's important to know if you're healthy. What are the signs of knowing that you're unhealthy? It's important for us to understand the signs of what it means for the church to be unhealthy or healthy. You know, before COVID in the United States of America, we had drifted pretty much towards a business model of what makes a church healthy or not. I'm not against business principles. I, I, my wife and I co-own a small business, so I'm not against business principles. But what I'm saying is you can't just take everything that works in business and apply it apples to apples, oranges to oranges with the church. Because we're not selling cars here. We're not selling cell phones here. We're we're not selling PlayStation 5s here. We are presenting a free gift of salvation through Christ Jesus for the transformation of lives here. So before COVID hit, pretty much we, we judged the church on outside appearance. So if the building was large, we were like, wow, look at that church. If there were a lot of people coming into the building, we were like, wow, look at that church. And if those people were leaving money before they left, we were like, look at that budget. Look at that building. Look at those people in, coming in the building. So we judged the success of a church by the numbers of people coming in. COVID changed that. So now we're at a point where the, the success, the health of a church is not about how many people are coming in. And I believe in growth. I don't want our church to be in decline. I, I don't. But, but, but the church today is not going to be judged primarily by how many people are coming in, but what kind of people are leaving out from the church going back into the world. Because if you, if you bring 10,000 people into the church, but you just release 10,000 selfish, slanderous, gossiping, hateful, unforgiving, unkind, ungentle, angry people talking about, give me my country back. Then, then hey. hey, is that really what it means to be Christian? Shaking your fists and yelling at people and you deciding who you going to judge that you think you're God and you can put people in heaven or hell. And so what we learned during COVID is that these Christians weren't as loving and kind and compassionate and full of empathy as we thought. These people weren't as reconciling and unity focused. These people weren't as truth oriented in the gospel of Jesus as we thought. They were more political. They were more ideological and they were more American than they were kingdom of God. That's what we found out during COVID. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about them other people. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about y'all. So we can't just judge the church's health by who's coming in. And you can't just judge a person's health by how many followers they have on TikTok and Instagram. Because on social media, you can look real healthy. You can look real good because you, you spent 50 minutes getting yourself ready before you took that selfie. And then you took it like... So, so a, a lot of people look good materially. They look good on the outside. And then when they take their life, we're shocked. When, when something horrible happens, the people go, they were such a quiet person. They were such a good kid. Because health starts from the inside out. So what is biblical health? Biblical health is about being spiritually healthy first. It, the Holy Spirit being the source of health. 
Health from the inside out. What's on the inside gives insight to our ability to live healthy lives. What's in the heart, what's in the mind is where the work towards health begins. Salvation is not just accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can go to heaven. Salvation is the belief that in Jesus Christ, God has a better plan than I do for how I can be healthy how I can be healthy. Uh, uh, God is more concerned about what is coming out of your heart than what is even going into your body. Now, I want to be careful with that line because it's like, oh, what? God is more concerned about what's in my heart than what I put in my body? Shoot, I'm going to start putting the stuff in my body. I want to. Matter of fact, I'm going to start telling people what I put in my body now because I wouldn't go tell because I didn't know God just said, well, wait a minute. Let, let, me, let, let me break this down. Let the Bible break it down. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, uh, beginning with verse 15. Uh, uh, Jesus says this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. Now, again, be careful because some people that take this line and just <laughs> increase their cannabis membership. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, some people would take that and, and, and get the four-piece meal instead of the two-piece meal. You know what I mean? Because, hey, for some people, food is the drug of choice. It, no, no, that, that's me. You know what I mean? You, you ain't going to catch me at, at the crack house, but you might catch me at the chicken house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's my drug. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, this is, I, I wasn't a base head, but I was a biscuit head. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> it, it, okay, okay. That, it ain't even funny, but you, everybody got a drug is what I'm saying. Everybody got a drug. All right, all right. So, so don't take this, this verse out of context that Jesus doesn't care what you put in your body. It's, it's a deeper principle. Because verse 17, after he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. He says, are you so dull? Man, Jesus. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. See, now y'all are going like, ooh, I can eat chitlins. Yes, thank you. <laughs> he went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. This is not Jesus saying that it doesn't matter what you consume into your body, what you consume into your ears, what you consume into your eyes. What he's saying is what you're consuming is connected to what is already in your heart. If you get your heart right it will change your consumption habits because some of the things we're doing to our bodies is based on what's going on in our emotions and in our thinking and because there's brokenness in my mind and there's brokenness in my heart that is driving what I'm consuming but if I let Christ take control of my being it will transform my consumption instead of wanting to consume something that leads me to addiction I will consume something that leads me to a anointing. Oh, I wish I could preach in here. I wish I could preach in here. We want you to be biblically healthy, health from the inside out. To understand this, you have to understand who God is. Let's go back to the main text. First Thessalonians five, beginning with verse 23. Paul says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Let's start there. What Paul is saying is our health begins with God. I know in the world that's not true. If you're not a Christian, this doesn't make sense. Because if you're not a Christian, if you're not a person of faith, your health begins with exercise. 
But see, without a relationship with God, we may not have the discipline to keep exercise going. You might say your health begins with your eating habits, but if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to govern your mind and your heart, then you might not be able to stay disciplined in what you eat. Because what, what, what it's saying here is health for the believer, health for the Christian begins with God. So I need to have an intimate relationship with God. I need to know who God is and how God is impacting my life to be healthy. So to be healthy, I start with God. God and God is triune. God is Father, the creator of the universe, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But if that's all God was, I would think that God is a distant God out there who is um, detached from this sinful, broken world, and I'm in isolation in it. But God is not just God the Father, the creator of the universe. God is also God the Son, the Messiah, who came into our world, who came into our existence and, and gave us a picture of God and died for our sins and rose out of the grave so we could be made new. God is Father. God is Son. God is also Holy Spirit. God living in us, God surrounding me, God dwelling in me so I can have an intimate relationship with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To understand God this way is to understand the beginning of how God wants to walk with me to be healthy. Uh, second thing is we need to know who we are. Paul describes the human being like this. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. So one of the ways to see the human being is we are, we are spirit, soul, and body. You are not just a physical being. You are a spiritual being. That, 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 that when this body breaks down on us, our faith drives us to believe that that's not the end. That's not it. There's something deeper in each one of us that's, that's deeper, it, 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 more than just our physical being, more than just our bodily organs. You are not just physical. You are a spiritual being, and this is the way that you have connection with God. We're also a, a, a soul, and this is our emotions. Uh, we make decisions at the intersection of Feel Avenue and Think Street. So our, 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 our thinking and our emotion plays a significant role in what we do physically. So we are a physical being, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. Another way to understand the health of the church is to go God, kingdom of God, where we will live eternally, and the church. And the church is supposed to be a picture of the kingdom of God until we realize the fullness of the kingdom of God when Jesus returns. See that? God is triune. We are tripartite as human beings. And there's even a triune mission between God, the church, and the kingdom of God. Y'all with me? So, now that we got the appetizers out the way, let me briefly, this is going to be brief. I'm going to give you three points on health from the inside out. Point one, developing a healthy spirit. If you want to be healthy from a biblical understanding, it starts with developing a healthy spirit. Now I want you to look at this. Notice I didn't, it says developing, which means health is a journey. Yes. Don't beat yourself up if you're not where you want to be right now. Don't shame yourself and stop letting other people shame you and beat you up and look at you up and down like something wrong. You know what? They need to mind their business because they're only looking at you to distract from how unhealthy they are. So, so it's developing. This is a journey. This is a journey. Healthy, being healthy is a journey. If you fall, get back up. If you fail, it's not over. All right. So one, developing a healthy spirit in the Greek, the word for spirit, Holy Spirit is pneuma in the Hebrew. It's Ruach or a fuller word that we won't fully break down today. The Ruach Hakodesh, the spirit of God, the move of God, the indwelling of God, the embodiment 
of God in some way. Health for the Christian is about developing a healthy spirit. John, the gospel of John. Sorry, y'all. There's a lot of Bible today. Now, I, I'm sorry, not sorry. John 14, be, beginning with verse 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. Let, can I just, let, let, let me start there. This means living the Christian life is not about an angry God giving you a bunch of laws and when you break them, God says, mm, mm, mm. living for God comes out of a love relationship with God. Okay? He says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you. Because what he's saying is you can't keep my commands in your own power. You can't do this. You can't, you don't have the power to sustain a healthy life by yourself. Jesus said, I got to give you somebody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. I'm going to give you an advocate. I'm gonna, we're going to send you some help so you can be healthy. It, 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 the spirit of truth, verse 17. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or, nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you developing a healthy spirit to, to, to be healthy in this way. You have to take time to, to unplug from television, yes. unplug from your cell phone, unplug from your iPad and your laptop, unplug from the chores of things you got to do at home, unplug from, from, from the, 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 the thoughts about work this week. You need moments where you're just quiet and alone with God. For me, sometimes I have to get up and go take a walk. I have to go and walk for three and a half to four miles by myself with, with nothing. Now, I'm, I'm not listening to music. I'm not talking on my phone. I'm, I'm looking at the sky. I'm looking at the clouds. I'm looking at the mountains. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back in tune with the creator of the universe. I'm getting back in tune with my mind and my heart is so cluttered that I forgot that God is in there. Because I've cluttered my own life with the junk of the world. I need to re-engage intimacy with God. For some of us, you've been a Christian too long to be coming here looking to get filled with God. You should have come here filled with God. You should have come here with God because there's other people that haven't been in church as long as you. They don't have a Bible yet. They, they, they're not sure about church and they need to be impacted by the God in you so they'll say yes to God in them developing a healthy spirit God wants to be a guide a teacher a counselor I'm not telling you don't go to the doctor I'm not telling you not to have a therapist I'm saying therapist doctor dentist some of us eye doctor and the Holy Spirit because sometimes when your doctor doesn't know what to say, the Holy Spirit has something to say. Sometimes when your therapist says, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, let's set another appointment for next month. <laughs> when your therapist has nothing to say, God still has something to say. Developing a healthy spirit. Point two, developing a healthy soul. The Greek word there is psyche, all right? So that's where we get psychology. But, but sometimes we think that the psyche or the soul is just the brain. It's just the mind. It is the mind, but it's also the emotions. It's our thinking. It's our feeling. This is kind of a, a modern thing in health. Because come on, let's be honest. Some of us around my age, I'm 53. I'm 53. So some of y'all in this room, like you didn't grow up and, and, and your family was like, so how's your mental health? That's right. That's right. I know why you didn't clean your room. You need mental health services. <laughs> my, my mom and dad gave me a service for not cleaning my room, but it had nothing to do with. It was physical. It was, it was physical. It was. I love my mom. If you're watching mom and dad. <laughs> So many of us in this room, attention to your emotional and mental health 
was never on the agenda of life. Is it just me? There were no counselors in my public schools that you could go to. You could go to the person that was going to suspend you from school. You could go to the person that would tell you how your grades were. You could go to the person that would tell you to fill out the form so you could take the ACT and the SAT for college. But there was nobody in my school. I remember in elementary school, if I, didn't, if I was in third grade and I didn't make it to the bathroom on time, they had like extra pants that said nurse's office on the butt. I remember that. But I don't remember... No person that cared about my emotional and mental health. So for many of this, we don't even know how to get on this journey, but it's biblical. God cares about the state of your heart. God cares about the state of your mind. I know there are some people that all they care about is what you physically bring to the table. They only care about your production. They only care about your performance. God cares about what is going on in your mind and in your heart. God cares about this stuff. It's why it is brought up in the Bible. So we have to be willing to engage our emotional self engage our mental self so that truth can swirl on the inside of us. I'm going to go to 3 John verse 2. 3 John, starting with verse 2, John writes this, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Is truth rooted in our minds and in our hearts? Sometimes the reason we're unhealthy is because our outside is just a reflection of our inside. Because there's some words that were spoken to us there were some things that were done to us that even though the physical bruise is gone, the emotional bruise is still there. The mental bruise is still there. We need to get healthy. You, let, me, let me talk about it this way. You know what's hard for me to admit? This was hard for me to admit. On the inside of 53-year-old Ephraim is 11-year-old Ephraim with a jerry curl and MC Hammer pants <laughs> and a boom box is on the inside of me. This Ephraim is still inside of that, that Ephraim. That, that, some of y'all don't even know. Bell Bottoms Ephraim is still in here. And I don't want to deal with that Ephraim. I'd rather not talk about that Ephraim. I'd rather not 16 year old Ephraim rise up but you know what happens if we don't acknowledge the social child on the inside of us we will be paralyzed by it right. some of the things you're saying to your spouse is the 12 year old and I know you don't want to hear this I'm sorry I, I know you I know I know I know I know some some of the you're really not mad at your boss you're still mad at your parents uh, you're, you're, you're not you're not really the, the, some of this stuff is not about you're, 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 you're not mad at who you think you're mad at because we don't I don't want to admit that Jerry curl Ephraim soul glow Ephraim is in here d d that this is why you know what the solution to dealing with your social child is becoming a spiritual child of God if you become a child of God, it will liberate you from your social child. If, if, if you become a son of God, a daughter of God, if you start, I dare you to call God father every day so you can be healed from the brokenness of whatever your earthly father did do or didn't do. When you start not just calling God, God, but calling God, daddy, crying out, if you become God. God's daughter, God's son, you will be liberated by being a spiritual child instead of enslaved by your social yeah. child. Amen. Amen. Finally, developing a healthy body, soma, the physical being. 
as I, as I get ready to come to a close, sisters and brothers, I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Man, this, this one's a little heavy, but go with me. Paul is writing, same Paul that wrote 1 Thessalonians is writing here in 1 Corinthians. Verse 12, I have the right to do anything you say because at the time in the Roman Empire, there were a lot of things that were legal. A lot of things that for some of us, when we were growing up in the United States, it was illegal. But in the Roman Empire, it was legal. The funny thing is, our country has pretty much become like that now. Those of us that are older in the room, there are some things that used to be illegal that are now legal. There used to be some things that were regulated that are now unregulated. There used to be boundaries around what you could buy, what you could consume, what your kids would be exposed to. Not now. Even the Disney Channel is suspect. I'm, I'm just being, I, I love the Disney Channel because I'm a Marvel Star Wars fan. But I'm like, hey, wait a minute. That ain't, that ain't the Disney I know. What happened to Tinkerbell? You don't even see the cricket anymore. I'm like, wait a minute. What cartoon character is that? Because we live in a world where a lot of stuff is legal now. I mean, it used to be there was the regular movie theater, and then there was the other movie theater where the movies were cheaper. And there was letters, the same three letters on that movie theater. And we knew, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to go to that one. Not now. Man, the things that used to be rated R, at the regular movie theater, you can see on NBC on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. I'm like, well, because now it's unregulated. Now it's legal. It's funny to me that there's a lot of people in prison for something you can just go buy on Broadway now. Ain't that something? A lot of people, a lot of people in prison that got caught with this much weed in a Ziploc bag, and now you can go right down the street from the church. And, 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 and it's legal. Wow. That's why Paul is saying, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I know that's heavy. I know this is heavy, but let me break this down. I've actually been to Corinth. Denisha and I, Pastor Bob and his wife, Letty, we went to Corinth in 2019. We've seen the ancient city of Corinth. Do you know why Paul is talking about sexual immorality and prostitution right now? Because in the Roman Empire, you could be in the city of Corinth, of Corinth, and at night, there were temples that you could see inside them. There were no glass win on the windows. There was no drapes, that pe blinds that people pulled. So at night, you could walk down the main street in Rome and see people with prostitutes. You could see immorality publicly you just it it wasn't being hid behind closed doors it was a money maker for the roman empire so what paul is trying to say i want to be very clear with this context here it, paul is referring to throughout the bible sexual immorality was connected to idolatry commodification and oppression so I, 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 can't, I can't hide this from you sisters and brothers the bible for the most part presents sex within the framework of marriage between a man and a woman. That's what it does. Now, the Bible also understands 
God, God understands that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people that live their lives outside of that framework of the Bible. And you know what God has for those people? Love, compassion, empathy, grace, time. Because I'm concerned that too many Christians are like looking at people that are doing things they're not doing and judging them like they get to make the decision of who's in heaven and who is not. Now, I'm not saying that people don't need to be corrected. People like like everybody's got to look at their own relationships, their own activity. I'm sorry that this is a PG-13 sermon I'm given, but I mean, the Bible's not rated G. So, 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 so I, I apologize, parents. I'm trying to say this as delicately as I can, okay? That, that sexual activity can be a place of unhealth if we're out of bounds and if we're not clear on what's best for our bodies. So because this is what has happened in this world, we have taken sexual activities, recreational activities, and we say that we want health. But what we really want is to make money in in the Roman Empire. And even in this nice country, in this great country, we commodify everything. I I can't even get an EpiPen right now because it costs four hundred dollars a month. And I'm going back and forth with my insurance because pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies care more about making the money than if I accidentally eat a cashew that I can get an EpiPen and stick myself in the leg. This is true. Everything that is about health has become about money. And even our activities have been commodified. So there's this history of we take sexuality and we make money off of it. And we make more money off of it. And we make more money off of it. And while we're making money, we tell people you are free to do whatever you want. Even if it's not really beneficial for you emotionally, mentally. It might have felt good last night. But was it really beneficial emotionally and mentally in the long run? I'm not saying this as a judgment. I'm trying to say this from a Bible perspective out of love. What to do with our bodies is such a big question in the culture. And there, and I get it. There are people, especially our sisters. Some of our sisters today are going, this is my body. You can't tell me what to do with it. I should get to choose What happens with my body? And you know what? I understand why so many women say that. Because you know why? Do you know the history of what we've done to female bodies in a broken, sinful world? A woman, there was a time when just a woman speaking up, you were called a witch and your body was burned alive. We have taken female bodies, we've taken brown bodies, black bodies, we've taken uh, at, at different times in history poor bodies, Protestant bodies, Catholic bodies. In some countries today, we're taking Christian bodies and we're persecuting them, oppressing them, breaking them, torturing them. So I understand why we live in a world that says, I want control of my body. I understand that. But at the same time, sisters and brothers, I'm here to tell you, your body is better with God than it is with you. Don't give your body to the world because the world only wants to make money off of your body. Be careful. Don't give your body to a broken person. Don't give your body to an unhealthy person. You should be so cautious and careful and strategic and purposeful about who gets this. Who gets your body? And you know what? Not only should you not trust the world with your body, you shouldn't trust you with your body either. I I don't know how else to say this. The Bible is saying God will do better with your body than we will. Because God loves you. God gave you your body in the first place. So why not give your body to the one who gave it to you? Now, what that looks like for you, I have no idea. But I know it it looks like something. For me, it looks like something. When I'm stressed, I do things with my body that aren't the best when I'm stressed. I told you, for me, it's the three-piece meal. 
For me, it's the why am I eating at 11 at night? Because I'm, something's going on in Pastor Ephraim's heart. That's why. So I'm not going to judge you. I got to lower my cholesterol. That's what I need to do. I don't need to be judging you. I need to lower my cholesterol. That's what I need to do. Sisters and brothers, God cares about the whole person. Do you? God loves you. Do you? I know we're over time. The, the, them folks out there can wait. Don't tell them I said that, but they can wait. Because in, I just feel in each one of these services, we need to focus on not leaving here until the people that need to reclaim their health reclaim it. And it starts with me and Pastor Bob. Me and Pastor Bob have decided we want to be healthy. That's why Pastor Bob took some time off. People don't need to be tripping about why he was gone for a little while. Because when it's my turn to go, will y'all let me go? Man, I'm not trying to say my job is any harder than yours, but my job is hard. Right. Pastor Bob, Pastor Krista, b- b- man, officiating funerals again and again and again and again, officiating weddings again and again, praying for people, counseling with people, preparing sermons, sitting with somebody in the hospital, watching somebody die in the ICU. You absorb a lot when you're a pastor. And then you try not to take it out on your wife or take it out on your kids. So I got to be healthy for Danisha. I got to be healthy for Jada and Maria. I got to be healthy. But it starts by admitting that I need to be healthy. And maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm just standing up here. I hope it's not just me. So I want to end this service by going, we're going to pray. I'm going to invite Pastor Krista up here. But as we close... I'm, I'm having her pray because I want to reclaim my health today. And I'm inviting you to join me. If you need to reclaim your health, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, if you know you need to say yes to being a healthy woman, a healthy man, healthy in your single life, healthy in your marriage, will you just stand up and come down here and join me? Matter of fact, I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to pretend I'm you to come get what I really need. She's going to be the pastor. I'm coming down here because I need this. Thank you, Jesus. And if you need it too, I'm asking you to come join me at the altar. Thank you, Come join Jesus. me at the altar. You don't have to, but if you need this, I'm asking Thank you to join you, Jesus. me. Jesus. Thank you, God. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. We need you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I'm thankful for your word in Isaiah, where you said you come to set captives free, Lord. Where you come to open prison doors, God. Thank you where you promise that you send your word and you heal us, Lord. Thank you, God, that you said that we can come to you. We can cast our cares on you, Lord, because you care for us. Father, we ask today, God, that you would break chains of addiction, Lord, that you would break chains of of low self-esteem, God, that you would break chains of unforgiveness, Lord, that you would heal stony hearts, God, that you would heal us in those places, those deep places, Lord, that you see where we need you. God, we ask that you would just bless every single person in this room today, Father, Whatever our struggles are, whatever our issues are, God, the places where we need healing, the places where we grieve, God, the places where, and spaces, God, where some of us have been living without hope. Father, thank you for your word today. Could you just repeat at this after me? Say, Lord, would you touch me? Let's just lift our hands. Would you touch me today? God, I'm yours. My body has been bought with the price. Come into the places in my heart where I need healing, where I need health, where I need hope. I ask this in your name, God. Thank you for what you're doing in this place all day, Lord. May we not leave the same. Let this be a moment of chains being fallen off, God. Break every chain, including my own chains, Lord. Break the places in my mind that need healing and forgiveness and wholeness. 
We thank you, God. Let this word continue to go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks for tuning into the Midtown Church YouTube channel. We want to stay connected with you, so join the online family right now by clicking here to subscribe to this channel. Be sure to click on the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And please, share this with a friend. Thank you and God bless.